Hello everyone! So, recently I had the privilege of watching Star Wars with someone who had never seen it before. And for the sake of her anonymity, she asked me not to reveal what her name is. Now I gave this person, who shall remain nameless because I haven't said her name at all, the option of what order to watch the movies in. For most people, there are two options. You can watch them in release order, or you can watch them in episode order. Episode order seems like it would be the logical way in which to watch the movies in. But there are a few issues with it. Firstly, there is a drastic visual difference between the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy. And jumping from the prequel to the original is kind of a jarring and unfortunate experience. Watching the films in episode order also ruins the surprise that Darth Vader is Luke's father. Yes, I know it's largely common knowledge at this point, but if you don't think it matters, go ahead and look up kids' reactions to the Vader reveal here on YouTube and tell me that it doesn't matter. It's pretty awesome. Watching the movies in episode order is a little bit like watching the end of Soylent Green or Planet of the Apes and then going back and watching the rest of the movie. Those are both Charlton Heston movies. Hmm. Another problem with episode order is that the prequels aren't the central story. Star Wars isn't the story of the fall and redemption of Darth Vader. It's about his children. And watching them in this way makes it seem like it's more about Vader. And it's not. He isn't a relatable character at all. Luke is. And George Lucas knew that. That's why he started off with episode four. Now, with release order, you end up watching three spectacular movies. And then watching three not quite spectacular movies. You also end on a down point. With episode order, you end with the triumphant return of the Jedi. With release order, you end with the discouraging revenge of the Sith. Yes, it's the order that I watched the movies in, but I didn't really have a choice at the time. The natural end to the current saga is return of the Jedi, not revenge of the Sith, which is what you end up watching if you watch them in release order. And also, with the special edition modified version of the movies, we see this at the end of revenge of the Sith. They superimposed Hayden Christensen's head onto Sebastian Shaw's body. Now, in the context of episode order, this kind of makes sense. But in the context of release order, it's very confusing. We just saw Sh Sebastian Shaw's decrepit looking face as Darth Vader a moment ago, and now we see uh, some random kid who looks like he's giving me bedroom eyes. Uncomfortable. Now, I've recently heard of a new third order with which to watch the movies in. An order that I'm going to use whenever I have to introduce someone new to the saga. It's called the Machete Order, and that order is this. A New Hope, The Empire Strikes Back, Attack of the Clones, Revenge of the Sith, and finally, Return of the Jedi. Machete Order makes episodes two and three a flashback explaining how Darth Vader became Luke's father. And yeah, it cuts out episode one entirely. Now, I actually like episode one, but I like it more because it's Star Wars and less because it's, you know, actually a good film. But cutting out episode one has a lot of benefits and very few drawbacks. All of the plot elements from episode one are either removed or reintroduced in episode two. And the things that we gain when we cut that movie out are delightful. <laughs> There's only one reference to midi-chlorians. There's no confusing age difference between Anakin and Padme. Virtually no Jar Jar at all. And no stupid virgin birth! Gah, Vader Jesus! Vader Jesus is gone, and it's awesome. Watching the films in machete order keeps intact the father reveal at the end of Empire Strikes Back, and moves the sibling reveal to the end of episode three, rather than in episode six. With this order, we still have the triumphant victory of the light side. When we see Luke Skywalker tell Jabba the Hutt not to underestimate his power, we see the parallel with Anakin Skywalker telling Obi-Wan Kenobi not to underestimate his power. And we see that Luke is on his way to the dark side. Yes, I know that he's all dressed in black like Darth Vader and just force choked one of Jabba's Gamorrean guards, but for some people, that's not evident. There is a clear parallel between the electrocution of Mace Windu and the attempted murder of Luke Skywalker. And this time, Anakin makes a different choice and he saves his son. The Machete Order keeps intact the quirky little green dude on Dagobah that ends up being a Jedi Master. And in episode six, when we hear Yoda say, Do not underestimate the power of the Emperor. We know he's speaking from experience. He was just defeated by the Emperor one movie ago. And most importantly, this order makes it so that the saga is about Darth Vader's children, not about Darth Vader himself. And you know what? The story is good! The story is good this way! The writing is good! How awesome is that? Uh, I, I could keep talking about this all day, but I'm just gonna let you guys go and give it a watch. Now, the Machete Order is not without its weaknesses, but I've gone on long enough. I think we can talk about it down in the comments. I'll also put a link to the original Machete Order article down in the doobly-doo for your reading pleasure. There's also a little red button that says subscribe right beneath my face. And if you don't press it, then uh, Jar Jar wins.
And also, after watching all of the movies, it should be noted that the natural next movie to watch would be Spaceballs.